One main world, one creation dream. Welcome to the class for all of you guys. Welcome for all of you that are just writing in the chat. How it works is jump skirt system, okay? So if you find out in many words, when in my maps, actually you can use a jump skirt system, okay? Let me show you the jump skirt system right now in action. You see that the sound each time is going to be different and also it's going to, uh, to change the volume for that, okay? So the players are going to hear different sounds each time that they play this uh, system. So if I press again, you hear the sound is a little bit different. And also the player is going to be in third, in third camera once more, not only to show the monster to the player, but also to um, be able to actually have a better view about their surroundings and see the arrows, okay? So we are going to have a single script for this. <clears throat> and the script is very easy. The condition is when someone uses the object, that's what is going to start the process. We are going to give a buff that actually is the effect, the effect that you see around the monster that is a, actually like spawning a small light. We are going to do a camera shake and we are going to do a dark effect, okay? For the pliers, okay? This is going to be just for um, the normal monster. Also, the pliers, the our human pliers, are going to receive an effect, which actually is going to, to do all those things, okay? So the camera for the pliers is going to shake. The, the pliers are going to receive a buff. And also, we are going to reduce the light for the camera a little bit, so the pliers are going to know this like a different thing, okay? So it's going to be a jump scare system because pliers are going to, you know, start shaking. So it's going to be like they will be giving an embolia or something similar. And also um, the light is going to change. So they are going to notice that something has been scared them, okay? All those things are going to not be able to do or are not going to be possible. Most of the things of this script in, in triggers, that's why we use scripts, okay? So what you are going to do is just in the same as a like folder that you have the previous script, you are going to create a new one, okay? And you are going to delete all the information in the new one, okay? Then you are going to move to this website. Once more, the website, I'm going to put it into the comments, okay? Uh, in this website, you are going to find, as always, all the different scripts, all the different triggers that we are going to see in this class. OK, guys, we are going to see a lot of things, but we have some specific triggers that we are going to use. In my case, I already uh, like reordered this and I put it into folders because before it was like a big mess with it. It was a lot of scripts. But now the only thing that you need to do is to search for the specific folder. And all the scripts for this class are going to be in order escape, okay? If you, if you see the previous classes, we already implement repair generators, we already implement the escape horror system and the flashlight system. Now we are going to implement terror hold, that is the one that is going to do that, okay? If you are in a computer, just hit here where it says copy route content, that's going to copy the code we know any language translation or other thing. If you are in a cell phone, you are not going to have that option. What you have to do is you are going to see in the screen something that says click um, click here to open uh, the folder or to open the screen. Let me no, OK. Yeah, you are going to see something that says click uh, to see the code or see the code. And when you click on that, you are going to see all the code. So if you are in cell phone, you need to be sure that you are copying from the beginning, from the line number one. We know the numbers, of course, just the text here to the end of the script that is going to be the line 126. And the end is going to be this um, specific uh, break uh, closet. OK, and also you need to be sure that your web browser is not translating this. So probably you are going to see this in another language. OK. That's what I not meant to do. Actually, what I wanted to do is just to do this. Okay, so let me put a this example here. As you see, probably you are going to have another language. If you see that the, or you need to, to confirm that your browser is not translating this. For that, in the search bar, just next around this area, 
you are going to see this. And you are going to see that there is a specific bar that says translation, okay? On this, you need to put the original language and be sure that it's in the original language, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, on here, for some reason, it's not working, but most of the times you will be able to do it, okay? So, I already have this copied, so I'm going to paste it right here. First thing that you are going to do, as always, is just put on save, okay? If you press on save and no, there is no problem, you will be able to save it. If it doesn't, if it gives you an error, what you have to do is just try to copy it again. Let me show you an example, okay? So imagine that you copy that without the last, uh, this last um, break. So if you try to save, it's going to tell you something like this. If you receive any kind of message, just be sure that you delete again and you copy again from zero, verifying that you are using the original language, okay? So right now, what you are going to see in the screen is this. I'm going to open another software to open the code. It's just because I can do zoom out, zoom out and zoom in in this one and not in many words. So with this, you will be able to see better the options that I'm going to choose. So as you see, this, uh, this screen has like, bigger uh, letters, okay? So, as always, guys, what I put you here, or what I put on this script, or the information that I'm going to place on here, is a first information about the version, then what the system requires, and then the setup options, okay? So with this, you don't have to mess with the real code. On here, you always are going to see this option that says, please do not modify anything below this. That means that all the things that you need to modify, it's here in setup, and for this one, we have only two, uh, four options, okay? This is optional, and I highly advise you not to change it because I already like regulate or graduate that uh, or calibrate these numbers. Uh, you only will need to change those two numbers, okay? And very important, on here, it tells us that we have to have an item that is going to be for the skill. Then we need to modify the proof 38, name it as Dicey 1, okay? We already did this in the first class. If you don't have it, you need to modify that proof, okay? So, on setup, the first option is the ID of the item that you will use to actually uh, run the trigger or to execute this. And then we have the total hold distance. This is the number of blocks that the system is going to detect the pliers with. I highly advise you to change the number. If you look in my personal setup on here, on the, my personal scripts, sorry, it's not this one. What I got here in Terror Hall Public is that according to my map, I have 55 blocks away, okay? So to set up this, what you have to do is just to change that information. If you don't know the ID of the number or of the item, what you have to do is just very simple, okay? On here, on the number, okay, sorry, this goes down. Let me change this a little bit. Okay, so you are going to see it a little bit better. And in this number, I'm going to delete the number that you see on there. And then I'm going to click on ID library and I'm going to go to item, okay? Once I am an item, I'm going to just go to custom and I'm going to select the item that we create in the first class, that is our uh, the second class, sorry, Terror Hold, okay? That is the item that is going to hold this skill. On here, I'm going to change the amount of distance that the block is going to be detected. I put it 55 blocks, that means that also it's, it's going to cover most of the maps, okay? Most of the maps, sorry. Then, uh, you have another option that says Shake Options. This is how much is going to shake or reduce the shaking for the pliers. In the, this is going to be the horizontal way. That means from the right to the left. So when the camera is doing this, it's going to just keep the 90% of 93% of the energy. And then the other one is the Y reduction. It's going to only keep the 90% of the energy. So that means that it's going to reduce and the energy or the movement for the Y axis faster than the other one, okay? So actually, if you don't want to mess with those two, it's okay, you don't need to do it. Just save it and rename the street. The street sorry, the script as always. Put it over the hole. And if everything goes right, in if the system is working, 
When you use that item, you are going to see that no plier, not your your main plier, that is going to be your monster, but the other pliers, if they are in range, that means they are in, in my case, 55 blocks inside or around my area, the camera for them is going to start shaking and it's going to do like this movement and it's going to turn off the screen. But very important guys, if you don't see that actually this is working fine, you need to modify the status that is being called dicey one okay so just remember that we create that in the second class that is very important but just in case um you what you need to do is to hit here in edit remember don't create edit and then yeah, you are going to go to neutral effect and you are going to select the first one that is going to be dicey okay and uh, the information about this effect is that you are going to remove everything that has as an effect and you are going to add vision brightness minus 70 and that's it with that is going to work okay if in case you only see the screen shake but you didn't see like the like the likes go or a little bit off now as i mentioned before <clears throat> another thing that we are going to do is to locate the pliers why this is important <clears throat> because with this, you will be able to see where the pliers are hiding as a monster. So it's not going to have, it's going to be more addictive gameplay because you have to keep running for the monster. And also, this is not going to be constant. So not all the time the, plier, the monster is going to know where the pliers are located just for a few seconds, okay? So that's going to give you also some time to move away and try to, to do another thing, okay? And uh, apart from this, this is going to be very useful because we are going to use the same skill, the scar system and the location system, okay? So how it works, okay? For this, we have just two different uh, like triggers or kind of triggers. The first ones are the panic triggers. That is actually the one that is going to show and draw the arrow inside the game that is going to show to the monster where the humans are, okay? And the second one is something that you can use for a lot of games and is the system to give a, a came in and a came out. That means to, to just switch to third person camera for some seconds and come back to the camera. So you will be able to show the pliers and you can do a lot of skills with this, okay? Um, why this is, is, is cool because, as I mentioned, you will be able to do a lot of things with this, okay guys? So for humans, that means that this is going to affect humans, it's going to be those two triggers. For the monster, it's going to be just this one that is going to just move out the camera and move back, okay? So how we are going to do this? What I need you to do is to confirm that uh, you have uh, the previous requirements, okay? So the previous requirements, we are already supposed to have it created on the second class, and is that we are going to have the booths, okay? The booth that I mentioned before, uh, that is modified, that is the IC one, needs to be already created or modified, and the second one is a new booth that is going to be called... Um, a uh, this one is going to be called a uh, monster or overhaul okay and also you have to have the item about overhaul you have to you had those uh, two previous requirements okay so i will have it right now right here you will be able to see here my overhaul once more we are going to check very quickly the information so i have an icon and effect for it okay i use this effect but because it's the same effect that you use for the beacons that will show the area and it shows like two big eyes and also like something that is like, you know, it's like detecting something like radio waves, okay? So that's going to be very um, like specific for the players, very demonstrative. I don't have any sound effect for it because the sound effect we already have it with a script that we just import is going to do a random sound. And the sound is going to change also every time that you play it, okay? No effects for it, and the attribute needs to be positive status, okay? Now, for the object, the, for the terror hole, remember that it's just an, an item that shows, uh, like, name and all the information. As an example, I'm going to do a quick translation here. Okay, it's already translated, why? Why many words showing me that it's not translated, okay? But, most important here, guys, we need to have a skill. The skill is to actually poof up, okay? 
And this is very important, okay? The duration or the amount of time, it's the amount of time that your camera is going to be out, okay? I put three seconds, it's more than enough. More time is going to be kind of frustrating because the player is going to, to have too much time into the player camera and, and it's going to have a difficult things for some things like, as an example, hit the pliers, okay? Another cool things about this, or another requirement, sorry, it's that it needs to be no target, no charge mode, and on here, very important, as our system is going to show the pliers for seven seconds, the monster cannot have all the time using this because it's going to be boring for the pliers to have like every every seven seconds a screen shake. And also it's going to be very, very overpowered for the monster because the monster will know all the time where the pliers are. So we have seven, sec seven seconds, sorry, uh, showing the plier. And apart from that, we have 14 seconds without showing the plier. That means that for 14 seconds, the pliers will be able to move around and try to hide, okay? That's going to make the, the map very or more fair. Now, for the target, you need to use same same team. And for the range type, you are going to use single target and consume type hunger level, okay? You are going to just press a uh, confirm, okay? Oh. Okay here there is something that is being showing up let's move this a little bit all right guys so now we already have those two requirements we are going to move to the trigger section okay i mentioned trigger but i put uh on the actual um uh, uh, just the normal uh, plugin section okay so now moving to trigger guys I know that we already create a lot of them. If you find out, we already create most of them, but we left two, okay? We left location and scare, and we left sound system. So we are going to start with this, and it's only four triggers, as I mentioned before. So you are going to create a new trigger set. The name of the trigger set is going to be location and scare, okay? Once you have that, you are going to add a new trigger. And the trigger is going to be panic on, okay? That's going to be the name we are going to start that. And this is what is going to actually show the location of the pliers, okay? Actions or events, it's very simple. We are going to check the event or this, the event is going to be when the plier receives an effect or a status, and it's going to be the status that we just check, the one that is power hold, okay? So just hit on pliers, and then you are going to select obtain status effect, but when you do that, uh, you are going to have on here different information, okay? So first condition, as always, we need to be sure that it's only going to work in normal pliers, okay? We don't want this uh, to actually be working for all the other pliers. We don't want the victims to be scared and be shown in the map because it's going to be necessary information for the monster. And we don't want the own monster to show itself because we don't want the players to know the monster location, okay? So for this, we are going to check the team player, okay? The, so you are going to select player, determine team, and the information will be the next. Players in trigger event, yes, in team blue, okay? Very important, team blue is the team for the players once more. And finally, we need to check which trigger or which I status actually, because if we don't place this, it probably is going to detect every time that any kind of player receives any status, okay? So for checking this, just go ahead, select here, select pliers and select determine a status, okay? It's right here, determine plier status. And it's going to be for pliers in trigger event, once more pliers in trigger event, yes. And do you need to select the status that you modify? Remember, it was the icy one, and the name that I put for or when I modify it is panic, okay? But if you don't modify that, you need to go to template library. Then you need to go right here to custom, and you need to go to uh, sorry to neutral effect, and you need to select as dicey one. In my case, as what I mentioned before, I modified as a dicey one, okay? So you can see probably I see that you already implement a kind of system. So remember, if you want to modify that the status, will help you better, I know. And with that, you don't have to create a new booth and search for the ID, okay? And then the actions, guys. The actions are going to be very simple. You are going to add first on here, 
an action, okay? And it's going to be information, okay? Remember that we already learned to cre how to create a text box. We learned how to create bars, and now we are going to learn how to create the arrows, okay? The arrows are going to be very similar to the previous one. The only difference is that uh, the arrows are going to point to some location. It can be over a location, it can be over a player, and it can point also to a location or to a player or to a creature or to an object, okay? So you are going to create, select this one, I'm not sure if it's this one or this one, but let's select create displayed information just to confirm. Yes, it's the first one. And on here you are going to see different information, okay? So the first two are going to be the arrows. The second ones are going to be just a guide, like it's li literally like a, a weight or a path to go to a specific location. And gate line, actually I don't see any difference. I think Miniboard needs to fix this, but uh, it's going to be just the same as a guide, okay? What we are going to select is arrow pointing to a location, okay? Because we don't want to point to any specific object. Now, when we have this one, what it's going to do is to create uh, an arrow, okay? So, remember, we are going to create it for a plier once more, not to a location for a plier, but then here we are going to select function library and we are going to select arrow points to location, okay? I already have it created here, so that's why I'm going to delete this one. Uh, but I already have it here, okay? When you have all that information or when you already select which kind of information or display information you are going to create, in this case the arrow, it's going to show you the next information, okay? It's going to show you on here when you expand the where it's going to point, the size of the arrow, the color of the arrow, and finally the ID of the arrow. This one works just like the ID for the text or the bars. It's just the same information, guys. But um, this one other, it's going to show you the color. Remember, you can choose a color like I teach you the last way, or you can select template library and you can choose which one is the, the actual color that you want to put for your arrow, okay? Now, for the arrow size, it's just the size. One is the normal size, two is the double, three is the triple, and like that. But the most important one is here, is where it's going to point your arrow. In my case, I select function library, and I'm going to select, um, if I'm not wrong, yes location offset okay so just select here location offset original location changes and then you are going to have these three boxes always or you are going to select event position and you are going to just change the number in the middle okay it's going to be in my case 100 you can put any number on here like 300 400 and what it's going to do this is just going to make the arrow points down or points up, okay? And that's it. Now that you have that information complete, remember zero in the first box, 300, zero in the second, and event position here. Now we are going to move to this part that says plier in trigger event. The arrow that I create, it points below, okay? You can select whatever. As an example, you can point about a dog that it's not going to matter. And on here, the distance is going to be one, okay? That's how we create the arrow right now when you do the game, or when you do this thing, like the skill, you're going to see that the pliers are going to have an arrow around this uh, their body, okay? But a most important part, we need to create a way to turn off this, okay? If, because if we don't turn off this, they all, always the pliers are going to have this arrow pointing up, okay? So how you can uh, delete this, okay? First, we are going to create a timer. The timer is going to have some seconds, and after those seconds, it's going to disappear. How do you do that, okay? So you are going to add a new one. You are going to select timer, and you are going to select rundown cooldown timer, okay? And you are going to have all this information. So in the first box, you need to select which variable we are going to count down. So as this is going to work different for every player, remember we are going to use local variables, okay? So, or private, sorry. For private variables, you need to go to player and select player's private variable, and you are going to get an extra box here in which you are going to select players in trigger event, and you are going to create a new variable. 
the name of the variable is going to be pointer time, okay? That's like the, the arrow that is going to show the player how many time it has passed before the effect deletes, okay? And you are going to select, apart from that, seven seconds and repeat timer is going to be false, okay? With that, we are going to end this specific part. It's, we already have like the first part of the panic, okay? We left a couple more, so we are going to create a new trigger. The trigger, you are going to rename it, guys, as a panic off, okay? And, uh, oh, okay, I didn't know that, can see. That's actually a cool uh, way to, to check that. So if you hit the plier, the monster, the monster is going to be blind. Interesting, I didn't check that uh, yesterday, but probably we will be able to check it now. Okay, so now that you have created the script or the trigger that is going to be panic off, what you are going to do is put the next condition, okay? You are going to go to plier and the uh, condition or the event is going to be moving, okay? The action is going to be that the timer time is going to be zero. Remember the timer that we just created? We are going to check that. So select numerical comparison in the conditions. And in the first box, you are going to select again in the library and timer time. Then you need to select which timer, okay? So remember, we need to choose again the private variable. To see the private variables, you need to add to a function, then select pliers private variable, and you need to select pliers on trigger event, pointer time, which once more is the variable that we just created, and it needs to be equals to zero, okay? When there is no time left in the time down, in the cooldown, and the plier that is moving, actually it's going to be the plier in the team those in the team number two, so we are going to select the determine plier team. Would you are going to go select plier in trigger event? Yes, in team two or team number blue. We are going to just do two simple things. First one is going to delete the arrow, and second one to change the variable, so the variable is not going to keep going down, so this is not going to execute again, okay? It's not going to auto-delete anymore. So first, let's delete the arrow. For the arrow, it's very easy, guys. You go here to display information. You are going to select it in the second column and the and the um, yeah the line number two. You are going to select this delete information from player, and you are going to select on here the arrow options here. Arrow pointing at the position needs to be the same, okay? If you choose arrow pointing to the target, it's not going to delete anything. You need to have the same one that is pointing to the position. Remember the ID must match with the one that you put into the player information, in my case is the number two, and pliers in trigger event. Once more, just to show you, when I create here in the other uh, trigger, when I create a variable, I put the ID on here that is going to be number two, so it has to have in the second trigger the same ID on here. And that's it, guys. Now we are going to just change the timer time. So for this, just go to timer, change timer time. That is around this area. And you are going to select once more the variable that we just created. Remember, plier, a functions plier, private variable. And in the private variable, you are going to choose plier entry element, pointer time. And the most important thing is that you put a minus one on here, okay? Minus one on the uh, results. And with that, your arrows are going to access and disappear. Right now, your system is supposed to be working completely fine. But in case, just in case you want to have like extra functions here, what we are going to do is that we are going to just do the camera out and the camera in, OK? So we already finished with those two that are going to be easy to you see. And you can use this system for a lot of things. With this, you can create a lot of arrow options, okay? But now we are going to go for this one, okay? And this one is going to be for pliers, okay? So this is going to be for the monster. And what we are going to do is to do a camera out and camera in, okay? So for creating this, just create a new trigger. Uh, okay, so. You are going to create a new trigger, you are going to rename it. The name that you are going to put is came out, or cam out, sorry. And, and we are going to add the first condition, okay? The first condition is, or the first action is going to be the easiest one. It is uh, very simple. 
When a player uses an item, we are going to switch the camera to third person. And the second one, the second trigger is when the player loses the gift, the poof that the, this item gives, we are going to move the camera to first person, okay? If you realize this, you also can create a system for any kind of monster. But for now, let's do this. Camera out is going to be on here, okay? So, in camera out, oh, that is going to just make the camera be in third person, we are going to add, again, once more, an action, and it's going to be plier, plier use item, okay? It's right here, in around some point, I, I don't remember where. Okay, oh, use props, okay? When you select use props, you are going to add another condition, the condition is going to be the item, okay? To select which item, just select plier, so, sorry, object, item, and you are going to select determine item type, okay? The item type is going to be overhaul. Remember, it's the item that you have in the second uh, like row, and it's the one that makes the player scary. It's just the same, okay? When we use to overhaul, my case is going to be that one. And the action, how you do, how you do, you change the player's camera is just going here to pliers, and in here you are going to have one option that allows you to change the view. That is going to be this one, okay? And this one has some easy things to do. First, we need to select the plier. Second, which kind of camera. And the third one is if the camera is going to be completely locked, okay? So select pliers and trigger event. And on here, we have the different options. Right now, the camera that we want is a third person. So we are going to select that one, okay? Now, if you want to do the same skill, but just to look forward, like as an example in a, in a racing map, well, you can select from view. And you have a lot of options here, okay? But for this, we are going to use trick part and the camera needs to be locked down so players won't be able to cheat, okay? Now, we already have this one. And as you see, it's very, as a very simple trigger. We are going to create the second one. It's just hit here, add a new trigger. On hit a, a new trigger, you are going to rename it as a, a cam in. That means that it's going to come back to the first person and the actions are going to be more easy than the previous one, okay? So first, we are going to select event on here, okay? And on here, we are going to select plier loosen a specific status, okay? Don't choose to lose a status. Instead of that, choose loosen a specific status. And we are going to choose for this one, overhaul, okay? So once more, template library, you select the overhaul that you created, it's the status. And when the players lose that status, the action that you are going to add is once more the same. We are going to go here, change the view, that is right here. And the action that we are going to change is to view. And here is just the same options, but we are going to change to first person, okay? And uh, once again, once more, uh, it's going to be for the players in the trigger event. And finally, it's going to be for log on, okay? Guys, with this, uh, your map is completely playable for that part. We already finished the two first topics, which actually it's kind of easy, okay? And let's move to the sound system, okay? So let me show you an example here, very quickly. So I'm going to be in the screen with Miniword. Uh, but I actually think you have uh, an Indonesia class, okay? If I'm not wrong, there is a minicamp for Indonesia. That is going to be for Jakaira. If you don't have the channel, I can share the channel with you because also we have an Indonesian class. Just give me a second, I want to be sure that what I'm telling to you. Okay, while well, I get that information, guys, check this. Let me just give a quick stop to the music so you will be able to hear everything better okay yes it seems that yes we have an indonesian teacher so it's going to be jahaira we have a mini camp for you guys so okay guys so for those that didn't know that let me put the link for the Indonesia class, okay? On here, I just put you the chat on. You will see that uh, actually Jahaira, it's actually a good teacher too. 
So there is two things that you are going to notice when you are in game. And remember the link for his channel, I just put it into the chat. If you hear, let me put the sound a little bit more. Depending of the monster that you are using, in my case, it's going to be the horse, man. The system is going to create random sounds when the player is moving, so the players will know that the monster is nearby to your area. And this is going to happen suddenly. So players will know this, that the monster is close. Also check this. When you put on a specific key like shift and you have the, the, the Sierra here, the, the Sao here, you will hear that the Sao is turning on. This is also going to help to scare the players a little bit. So with this, you can uh, make the players scared. Imagine the player is here and you are coming from his back and you want to scare the player a little bit. You can play the sound. And another system that I do is that the player will be able to make some sounds when it hits some blocks. As an example, if you hit this block, depending on the monster, it's going to have a different sound, okay? And this is going to change per monster. Let me use and buy another monster as an example, the spider. Or Okay, no, the spider is not going to be that much clear. Um, let's choose instead the phantom here, okay? Okay, no, it's too expensive right now. Let's just edit and play the game. Okay, guys, so what I mentioned before, it is not just a joke. If you want to learn a specific game for the next minicamp, as an example, you want to learn how to do uh, another kind of map, I don't know, um, like um, a soccer game or whatever you want to learn, just let me know, okay? So if you notice this monster, that is going to be the ghost. It's going to have a different sound, okay? So if you hear, it's a different sound. It's not the horse. It's like some wind screaming. And also when you hit the blocks, it's going to have different sounds. So we are going to learn how to create those. A sound system is actually a really easy system to create, okay? So let me change here the screen for the presentation and let me show how it works, okay? So remember this, guys. Last class, we learned how to create the most multi-monster system. And it, at the end of the multi-monster system, we left two things. The first one was to create a different, like, a, or activate different activators, the ones or, yeah, triggers. The ones that we are going to activate is two different for each one, okay? But as we are going to have different monsters, it, it will be nice to activate only one of the sounds at a time. So with that, you are not going to have that lag because when you move and you put sounds when you move, uh, probably it's going to to take a lot of memory and it's going to make your game slower. So with this, you also are going to learn how to do this. You can turn up some triggers when you don't need it. And the game is going to run much, much faster, okay? So how it's going to work? Once more, the any monster brain is going to choose a random monster. And when we choose that random monster, we are going to activate that specific monster sounds. We have two triggers per monster. The first one is going to be the sounds, okay? The sound is going to reproduce a random sound when the player uh, actually hits a, um, a block. And the second one is the sound about moving, okay? And another, another important that you think that you are going to learn with this is create random sounds, okay? So check this. And this is a trick uh, that most of the games that you play are going to use. They are going to make a single sound, but they are going to do a small variations of that sound. And why this is important, guys? Because um, with this, uh, you are not going to make the player bored. If the player always hear the same sound, the exact same sound, it can be a little bit boring for the player because the game is not going to feel alive. 
So what the most of the games are going to do is to change the tone of the game or the sound. So each time that you hear the same sound, it's going to sound a little bit different, like this. If you realize, like there was like a lot of different sounds here and also the volume change. So if you realize there are just small changes in the sound, not too big, there are like very, very small changes, but this is will make your game uh, feel a little bit different because the sounds are going to be a little bit different each time. Okay, so we are going to learn how to do that too, okay? So let's start with this. What I need you to do is just go and create a new trigger set, okay guys? The trigger set that we are going to create, we are going to rename it as a sound system, okay? In my case, uh, I have a lot of them because I have four monsters. In your case, you are going to create a, a one of each one for each monster, okay? So first one, it's going to be the sound when you actually uh, hit a specific thing, okay? So just create a new trigger and rename it, okay? In my case, the first monster is going to be the Axeman, or I rename it as a Fiend, because at the beginning it was going to be a, an Axeman, but now then I change it, okay? The Fiend sound and the uh, moving sound for the Fiend. These are going to be the two different scripts or the two different triggers, actually. And the first one is the one that is going to do a random sound when the player interacts or hit any kind of block, okay? So how you are going to do this? Just go here in event, and you are going to add the first action or condition. You are going to go to pliers, and you are going to select pliers when click a block, okay? That's going to be the first one. Uh, the second one, you are going to go to blocks, and you are going to select when it's been minute or ticket, that is right here, okay? Uh, you are going to just select that one. And the third one is when the player put the shift key, okay? This is going to be interesting. Not all the monsters need that. In my case, I use it when, as an example, the player has the so that is an interesting mechanic but you don't need to put uh, this extra for all the pliers, okay? What you do is just select here, long press in pliers, that is going to detect when the pliers keep holding a key, and in my case, I use shift key, okay? Uh, but not all the monsters, as I mentioned, need this one, okay? Now, for the condition, this is only going to work for the team number red, so just select Aka uh, on here, determine plier team, and in the Termine Plier team, you are going to select monster is equals to, uh, sorry, yeah, the Determine Plier team, and very important, guys, for pliers in Trigger Event. Now, the other cool thing, or the other thing that you need to do is that we need to do a numerical comparison, and remember that we, in the last class, create this variable that is the monster. So, for the first monsters, of course, the, the condition here is going to be that the monster needs to be equals to one, for the second monster, in my case, I'm going to show you, it, the condition that changes is that the monster is going to be equals to two, and like that, okay, for the third monster, number three. Now, the actions, guys. How do you can create a random sound, okay? And this is going to be very easy to do, guys. What you need to do is just you need to assign a variable. You are going to select a value setup, and this variable is going to give us the random tone and the random sound for the player, okay? So what you are going to do is just, in the variable, you are going to create a new one. The name of this variable has to be random volume or whatever name you wanted to give it. I recommend it to keep the same name so you are going to not be loose or confused with the names, okay? Yes, that's the uh, that's the actual channel for uh, the teacher. is Jaka or Jakaraisu. I don't know how to pronounce it, okay? But he's a teacher from actually uh, Indonesia. And uh, right now, what you are going to do is to add a random calculation. Okay, so guys, go to f uh, just math, then select a random number. And in random number, you are going to generate any number in between, and this is very important, guys 80 and 120. Okay, guys? 
very important, check the numbers, okay? And it needs to have the same numbers because uh, this is going to be kind of tricky for the with things that we are going to do. So be sure that you have the same numbers between 80 and 120, okay, guys? Very important on here, big alert. I need you to put the same number, guys. What well, If you don't put the same number, probably you are going to get some mistakes, okay? So remember random number in between 80 and 120. Once we have that, we will be able to play the sound. But this sound that we are going to play, it's going to have some specific um, setups in comparison of most of the times that we do a sound, okay? And remember, whenever you want to do like a system that does random sounds, use this script, okay? Or this trigger. What you are going to do is add sound effects, just like you usually do. You can select pliers or location. In this case, we are going to select pliers. Pliers, and how do you say? It's not players, you know, it's pliers, correct? Or players, I'm not sure. All right, so in the information first, you are going to select pliers in trigger event. Then you are going to select behavior or whatever sound you want it. Remember to choose a good sound for your monster. In my case, it's this one. That this is going to be the sound that the monster is going to do when it hits something, okay? Now, very important, guys, in my case is behavior 120. Here is where we are going to start using random volume, okay? So the first one where it says volume is equals, most of the times you are going to have it in 100. You are going to choose, in this case, the variable that we just created. And now, apart from the volume that you already know what is a volume, is just the amount of uh, sound that is going to exit from your computer, we are going to have the key right here. And the key is going to be kind of different. The key is basically like the tone for the pliers. So remember, if you can have different tones in a sound, as an example, my voice will sound like this if I use a lower tone. And my voice is going to sound like this if I have a higher. So it's just the same, okay? It's just an example. Don't make memes of me, don't make memes. Um, but that's the example. If you have higher numbers, it's going to sound like more like, a, yeah, like, a, I don't know, a delicate sound. And if you use a lower tone, it's going to sound more like this. And those also happen for the uh, different uh, the different sounds that you are going to have in game, okay? So what we are going to do for this and to make it work fine is that we need to choose a random number that we already have based on this one, okay? And many words is not going to do like numbers with points. And for this, we need to do a point, okay? What I mean when we do a point, okay? Let me show you an example very quickly, okay? Mini word, when you ask for a random number, it's going to give you uh, integer values that are going to be complete numbers, okay? But never is going to give you a number like this, okay? you know, uh, numbers that are not integers, that are divided, real numbers, okay? So what we need to do is to first to get a, a random number, in this case, as an example, 120, and then we need to divide it to be able to use, uh, get numbers like this, because stones work from one to a, any number, okay? So as an example, one is going to be the normal tone, zero point, Five is going to be half of the tone, and 1.5 is going to be a, like a half more of the tone. And this is going to start sounding very strange, okay? So what we are going to do is to change the tone in random number in between 0 0.8 and 1.2. So for this, we are going to need to do the next trick. We are going to do a numeric comparison. We are going to go here in math, numeric calculation, and then in the first number, we are going to choose the variable that we just created, random number. In the middle, we are going to select divide it, and we are going to divide it in 100. This is going to give us a random, a random tone on here, okay? And that's it. Of course, on here, you cannot hear that, but when you play the game, you will be able to hit the random sound. Once more, quick demonstration here. So you will be able to see that, okay? Yeah, that's that's very similar to Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse is having a higher tone. Okay, once more. If I hit this, those small changes in the sound.
are going to be related with the random sound that we place, okay? Let me confirm something here very easy. I want to be sure, I think I need a zero more. That's not working fine as it's supposed to, or I'm not sure. So let me divide this into 100. Okay, yes, it's working fine. So as you see it, we are going to get a random number in between those, okay? And that's how it works. Now we are going to just do the same, but we are going to change the event. We are going to do it the next way. So we already have a like this system that actually is going to only work when the monster X is activated, in this case, monster A, and it's going to work with all the conditions. The second one is just the same, but what actually is going to change is the move, okay? So this is going to work when the player moves one block and only has 2% of chances to work. Because if we do it all the time, it's going to make a lot of strange no's, okay? Uh, like it's going to, to be too much for the players. So how do you do that? We are going just to copy and paste this trigger, but we are going to rename it as moving sound and the name of your monster, okay? Now, what we are going to delete all the events on here and the event that we are going to add after we delete all of the events here is going to be moving, okay? So pliers, and we are going to select apart from pliers, we are going to select moving, okay? Now, for the conditions, as you see, we have almost the same conditions, but we need to add a new one, okay? And the condition is which actually is going to check how much percent of the times is going to do this sound. So just go here, you're going to add a new numerical comparison here, and uh, you are going to add a random number at the beginning. Guys, remember, it's the, the trigger that we always do when we want to check a condition with percentage or chances. So we are going to select function library and on here we are going to select math and random number, okay? When you have random number, this is very important, the numbers needs to be the same. You need to choose a random number in between zero and 100, okay? And also the condition is the most important. The condition needs to be less than or equals to and the number here is going to be the percentage, okay? Remember that only the 2% of the time is going to do the same the sound and let me show you the difference, okay? If I put 100 here, or let's put another number, let's put a higher number, like it's going to be 20, okay? Now the problem will be to make the monster make the same sound, but I'm going to change that very quickly here. Just give me a second here. Don't do this at home. It's just something that I used to be sure that the monster is going to give me the right sound, okay? Okay, so now as you are going to hear, I change that and what happened is this. Okay, what happened? There's no sound for some reason. Okay, I think I messed up something. Let me see what happened here. I think I delete something that I doesn't support, supposed to delete. Mm, just give me a second here. Oh, okay. I forgot that I I turned off this yesterday, okay? Just to show you. But now let's do it, okay? All right. All right, here it is. Okay, still not working. So if you realize, it's going to make a lot of sounds most of the times, okay? That's too much. As you see, I only changed the number from 2 to 20%, and it's doing a lot of sounds, which actually is going to become a little bit uh, upset for pliers. So that's why I highly advise you to have the number on here, change it on the, on the, on the uh, one that we create on here to number two, as you see, it's that much less time and it's going to not be that kind of frustrating. And you can keep the same actions here, but you are going to change the sound. So the sound that I highly advise you to put is most of the sounds are going to be in standby. I use a standby number 72. That is going to be this one. <laughs> On here you can find a lot of sounds that you can use for moving.
as you see, I using that one. Okay, and that's it. With this, we are almost have it our system. Now, this is very important. You are going to have your strips or your scripts or your triggers. Sorry, I always confuse that. You're going to always are going to have your triggers like this. Okay, the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to disactivate this. To avoid this to be executed, you are going to just click on the check mark, and once the check mark is removed. It, this is not going to execute unless you add a manual thing to turn on that, okay? So as you have been a lot of monsters, I highly recommend it to just turn off this because uh, this is going to take a lot of game memory and probably your game is going to be lag if you have a lot of monsters. What you are going to do is that you are going to move at the end to the previous class trigger. Remember that we create uh, the, the monster trigger, the last class. So you are going to move the specific monster and we are going to do two new actions, okay? So the actions are going to actually turn on those triggers. And how you are going to do this? Just as a new action, the action is going to be in triggers. And once we are in triggers, we have just the, the same triggers as always, but we also are going to have those options, okay? Just give me a second here. Okay. So we always are going to have those options, right? There is one that says change trigger status, okay? And also one that says change uh, trigger set status. With this, you can change an entirely folder. And with this, you can change single trigger. So you are going to change single trigger status. Just click on this one. And on here, you are going to have the next information. The first one, you are going to select which trigger you need to turn on. In our case, we are going to select the one that we just create. So remember, the first one is just the, the one that is going to make the sound when you hit a block. So we are going to select that one. You are going to go to trigger. Then you are going to select sound system and you are going to select your monster sound. OK, and the state needs to be on. OK, with this, this is going to make your system turn on the trigger again and just copy and paste. And in the second one, you are going to select once more, the second sound, okay? So once more, select triggers, sound, and select the second trigger that we create for your monster for to make the sound. And we are going to, uh, once more, select turn on on that one. With this, you are going to have your system finish it. Right now, your monsters also make some sound. We left the final part, okay? And if you have played my map, when the victims are completely transformed into victims, when they are have been captured, in the main room, if they try to exit from here, they are going to be pushed away or they are going to be automatically moved to the center of the map so they won't be able to exit this area. Even if they have lag, they are going to be teleported here, okay? And how you can do that, okay? That's going to be the final part, guys. So just before moving to that part, uh, yeah, let me show you the theory here, okay? So you are going to see in the screen how it works. As you see, it's not that much complicated. It's just a single trigger. And let me explain better how it works. So we need to have first an area that we already have on a location, a uh, yeah, not a location, a region. And the region is going to be, or the area, it's going to be the area where your victims are. That is going to be the main room or the victims are, okay? So when the victims are here, there is not going to happen anything, okay? But when the victims try to move away from this area, these tails are going to be in this area, what the system is going to do is to calculate where is the center of the area and where is the location of the victim, okay? And what it's going to do is to create a direction in between those two areas. So it's going to say, okay, so this uh, emoji, this person, let me connect this, okay? So this person is moving in a specific area and always is going to be pointing to the center. So as an example, if the victim tries to exit from here, it's going to detect the direction between the center, the victim and the center of the area, and it's going to push the monster in that location, okay? So we are going to learn how to do that, how to push a monster to the center of an area or to a specific location. And we are going to add a couple of things more, okay? Moving back to this, uh, once more, in the practice, this is my area, the area that detects if the pliers are exit, and automatically the area, the center of the area is going to be this one, okay? So, how do you do that? Well, 
you are going to move back to capture pliers and you are going to create a new trigger, okay? The name of the trigger is going to be keep victims or just keep victims, whatever you want to put on there, okay? And the actions are going to be the next one. The first one is going to be pliers and pliers exit from an area. That is going to be this one that is plier leaves an area. The area that we are going to choose, a, remember choose on here, choose area. And on here we have a lot of areas, but we are going to choose the area that covers all the room, okay? So we are going to be sure also that if the plier tries to go up, or it's going to return the pliers to the center, okay? Then we are going to add a condition. The condition is that this is only going to work for pliers that are in the trim number three, okay? So select determine plier team, and in determine plier team, you are going to select pliers in trigger event, yes, and it's in team number three, or team green, okay? And the action, the most important one that I'm going to teach you how to do, so you will be able to do this in the future, in whatever uh, case you want it, as an example, you want to push a, push a plier to uh, a lava or a volcano, whatever you want to do with this, is going to be the next one. So first, you are going to add the action that moves the plier, just go to plier, ma make flyer moves towards our direction, okay? This is being called technically a knockback. Knockback is when you push someone and you get actually the push and the plier is moving and is reducing the speed a little bit, okay? So, the first area is going to tell us which pliers, in which case you are going to select the plier in trigger event. Then we need to have the direction. On here, we are going to do some tricks and then the speed, okay? The speed is actually the force or the power that you are going to push the plier. So, if you put a 10 on here, it's going to push the plier away, very, very high, very speed. Uh, but if you place another number here, uh, a lesser number is going to have less speed, okay? So let me show you the example very quickly here. I'm going to just change the condition here so you will be able to, to see the effect, the complete effect in real time, okay? Let me show you that. And I see that new gen is here. So welcome to the class. I also see a couple of pliers. So let me show the full effect here, okay? And I'm going to use third pliers cam. Right now, nothing happens because I'm in the area. But as soon and as I try to exit from the area, this is going to happen. As you see, I get returning to the center of the area once more here. And let me show you in third player screen what is going to happen. So I won't be able to exit from this area. I always be captured here in the middle and there is nothing that I can do to exit. Even if I, if I try to use the skills to move faster, i just going to be redirected to the center of the capture pliers area, okay? Of course, this is only going to work in victims because we are going to check on the plier. And also, you check this. I have the information here, so the plier is going to have a clear idea about what is happens, okay? So, the actions, guys. Moving back to this. On here, we are going to select function library, okay? And here, you are going to have one that says word, and one that says from one position to another, okay? So that's how we are going to know that. Remember this uh, direction that we need to find out? Well, we are going to have two different positions. We are going to have the center of the area and the position of the plier. With this, always doesn't matter where the plier is going to move, they are going to be returned to the center of the area, okay? So how you are going to do this? When you open this, it's going to tell you to choose two, two specific locations. The first one is going to be the initial point, and the second one is going to be the finish point. So in the initial point, don't overcomplicate yourself, just select event position. And in the second one, you are going to select the target position, the, in which player is going to be at the end. So in my case, just select function, and you are going to select central location of the area, and in the area, you are going to select, of course, victim's area. If uh, you don't want to do it in this way and you have a specific area where the pliers are going to be moved with, as an example, you want to, the pliers to be pulled or pushed to the uh, monster location, just change that, okay? And that's it. With that, you are going to have the location. Now, now let me show you the example if I move this, okay? We have a two on here. What happens if I put a one or a two, okay? If I put a 2 complete, not 0 0.2, just a 2, 
check what is going to happen. And this is going to be kind of difficult, okay? Once more, the second. Okay. Once more, let me show you. That is too much power. So I highly advise you to, to check and test which number is going to work best for you. As you see, there is too much power that I get like stamped to this part. And that can be kind of um, upset because the players will know what is actually happening. So be sure that you don't choose a really high number in there because probably there is something that can happen like this. As you see, I get teleported to power too, too much to this side, then I get teleported back on there and then back and finally end, end around this area. So be sure that the number that you put in here is not a big number, okay? All right, here. Let me change once more. And like going to change the number here. Remember that I used to have 0.2. Now, we already have this. Now what we are going to do is add an effect to the player. So remember, feedback is very important. As always, I tell you this. Feedback is composed by an effect, by a sound, and also by a floating text and a chat if it's possible, okay? chat only when it works with like rules and things like that in skills you don't need to put a chat or a text message but it's important this okay so next step we are going to add an effect the effect that i use is a default effect so just select obtain effect and it's going to be in the target that is going to be the player the one i use is and the the root one why because it has the chains around so the player no will notice that it's like restricted to some specific point okay and remain is going to be false, okay? And it's going to be for just 0.5 seconds. It's going to be very short, okay? Now, apart from this, I show in a text message to the player. So just go here to player. And then we are going to have that around this area. Yes, okay. Display text to player. And the text message is going to show victims cannot exit, okay? You can choose whatever sound or whatever uh, actual text you want. Also, you can translate this to different languages. Remember, if you translate, it's going to be much clearer for the players. I also use a red color and I use the X around the, around the text because it's going to let the players know that they are doing something wrong, okay? Portuguese is well, uh, Thai is not well. And Indonesian is okay. All right. Apart from this, I sent a chat info explaining a, like extra information. Okay, so the text is going to be a short information. The chat is going to explain better what is happening to the player. So you just go to player and you are going to add again the other, the other one that says display chat info. And the chat info that I explained to the player is you need to be a rescue to be able to exit. So the first one, remember, told the player like you cannot exit, victims cannot exit. And the second one is explaining the player what they have to do to exit from this area. This is going to be very important. Um, remember, those kind of texts are going to, to let the players know what they have to do in these kind of locations. Once more, I'm going to translate because it seems that I forgot to do that. And as always, Thai translation is giving me problems. And okay, something that I, that I do when this happened is that I actually don't know which part is not showing, so I just put the name in English uh, because, to be honest, I don't know which one is the part that is not working fine, okay? Now, finally, I add another sound, so let me give a small pause to the music. And the sound that I put on is this one that is going to be or show to the player very clear that something is not right, that, that the player is doing something wrong, and that's it. Listen, and that's it. The final result is the one that you see in the screen for the previous one, okay? And with this, guys, congratulations. We already finished the class. Remember, a, there is a lot of things that you can implement extra, and that's what I want to see in the class, okay?